Hello everyone, so it's time to start a new video and today I'm going to be starting work on the saw head for the sawmill. So I've got some steel lined up, I've got a rough idea, I've got some lengths and stuff labelled up and I'm just going to cut everything in bulk and start putting something together. No doubt we'll make mistakes and things will need to be changed but it's just part of it when you haven't got like a CAD drawing or something. Uh, so yeah, let's get to work. Working on the floor so I don't get metal filings all in my bench. My bench is for woodworking. Woodworking workshop, unfortunately, because we have no metal working workshop yet. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is get these wheels on here this carriage just getting everything laid out I've got this set up, this is my uh, runner, it goes up the side, side rail, and uh, yeah, this is the, bit of the wheels on it, They're slightly different sizes, but that's not going to be a problem, I think we're good there, get that tacked on. Right, so they just got me pulley wheels fitted. Uh, like I said at the start of the video, it's uh, quite normal to have to change things. And I've just noticed that I don't need these sliders to be right up here. It just means they have to be able to go higher. And they'll be better if they're close in the middle. And the band's lowest point, you know, it, it, they don't need to be right up there. They can be right down here. So I'm going to just cut them off and slide them down in the middle somewhere. I think that'll be better stability for them. Good morning everyone, so uh, yesterday it chucked it down, I didn't get a huge amount done really, um, I had to make some changes as well, uh, 
these were slightly too long. I hadn't accounted for the fact of how far all everything sits forward. Um, so my first cut wasn't going to line up with here. So I had to shorten uh, the back of these a little bit. Um, so now once it sticks out of the blade, we'll start about here. And then we can get our first, you know, the log can sit here. And we'll start the cut, so I had to change that. I also added these plates on here, I'll show you. This here is going to be the adjuster for the um, uh, tension and tracking of the pulley that way and that way so it sits on here and these will move in and out with two screws which will not only tension but it also track uh, but they had too much play in them um, so I've had to weld like a, a thin bit of plate to top and side to take out that play so now there's only a tiny bit of play in them because it was moving around too much it was never going to be a stable um, mechanism so I did that as well um, a couple of other design issues I'll run through. So yeah, I'm going to uh, take these plates off and I'm going to move this over to as far over this way as possible as well. I'm going to do that today. Um, originally I went out this side to get absolute maximum cut, but currently um, all that's going to do for me is really waste blade length because I'm just going to have to buy a longer blade. It being right out here, um, there's an area that I'm just not going to be able to cut anyway because of the size of the bed this doesn't make any sense so I might as well have this moved over as far as I can have less overhang on the trailer so I'm going to move that over and another problem so the next problem is um, can you see there yeah so the next problem is that um, these are lower than the track that runs past so if I roll it past you see these are actually higher than it by quite a bit you know too much basically so then the blade ends up unless I pull everything right forward which I don't want to do the blade ends up hitting here before I can get down to a nice minimum cut the industry standard seems to be the last cut you can do to be an inch um, so that's my target uh, which means I either need to raise these up or um, cut this back and I don't want to cut this back so I want this bit of overhang to keep it so it stop it from you know being unbalanced because it's already quite small anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some wooden slats, I think, to raise this up, because it, it seems to me a good idea to not have your nice beam um, sliding around on painted metal or rusty metal anyway. So I'll make some wooden slats, raise that up, and then that will get me down so that the blade will be close to here but not touching. I'll probably angle these back a bit as well, and, and then we'll get a minimum cut. So I'm going to make those changes before we go any further. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd just show you, it's all running lovely. It runs really well all the way down the track. That's a good thing. So I think today we can make some actual forward progress with it. I just want to change these design issues. And we'll start getting the frame built around it a bit, getting the pulleys mounted again. Right, I'm happy with my clearances and heights and everything now. Um, so that's good. So I'll have uh, some tabs down here with some bolts so I can adjust the tracking on this. The tensioner does the tracking as well on the other side. So we've got to track both sides. I'm not sure if that's needed or not, but I think it can't hurt. Um, Height-wise, we're good. Our maximum cut is going to be around 30 to 32 wide inches, about 800 millimetres, and about 28 high. So that means that because you're always going to have to take the first cut, you know, a couple of inches down, which means basically I can do a 32 by 32 inch log. So that sort of size on it, which is bigger than anything I've got on my land. And, you know, that is a big piece of wood, especially at five, six meters long. So I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start building the frame get a frame built and then we'll start putting in some of the adjustments and raising and lowering stuff and all that but let's do a frame first Right, so I've got my uh, two sides tacked on. 
welded permanently there, tacked on there. Top isn't welded because I think I'm going to put some pulleys in it for the raising and lowering system before I weld it on there so I can do that on the ground. Which I think I'm going to work on that next just so that I can take these clamps off and we'll have a, a raise and lower up which will be helpful for building it because I can move it up and down and move it. at the moment I've got to manually lift it so I think I'll work on the raising and lowering next. Let's work that out. Alright so just uh, rested the engine in place roughly where it's going to go just so I know I'm going to clear everything. The way I'm going to do is I'm going to have the winch mounted on here it clears everything and then pulley here up there and then it'll come down and there's a pulley either side of this and because it's sort of slung between two pulleys I think it should raise it evenly even though it's winched from one side. We've got bearings and little Right, mount this winch and having it here I think we're going to have enough height and clearance and I wind the handle there keeps it out of the way of me walking past it here and I think we should have enough clearance Hey everyone, so it's a miserable day finding uh, it difficult to do my welding and stuff in the rain so I'm just trying to do little jobs that I can get on with um, this is one of them. This is an old stainless steel fire extinguisher from a jet engine that I made years ago. And I was thinking it's going to be the perfect thing to be a drip feed water tank for the mill because it's really light. You know, it'd be full of water, but we're trying to keep the weight down when we can. Uh, I'm just going to make some nicer brackets for it other than these bits of box and mount it to the sawmill just basically like that. All right, there we go. That should be a water tank sorted. So I'll mount that sort of on that post somewhere. Go and see if we can do that now, but it's currently raining again. They've, this is, was a fuel tank for a jet engine, and uh, so it's got these jig fittings welded into it. So I'm going to have to plug one of them, that one, and we use that one because it's at the lowest point. Right, it's actually stopped raining for the first time all day, so managed to have a little bit of a sweep up and a little tidy up and uh, yeah, hopefully do a little video now to go over where I'm at with this. It's looking good, it's raising and lowering well. So that's good. Um, it's not raising perfectly evenly, this side lifts a tiny bit before that side but I'm going to put a battery on this side as well which should pu push the balance over this way I think that will sort it out um, yeah my alignment I think I'm getting it so yeah there's the uh, that's imitating the pulley that I've got coming on order and uh, so we're just basically just going to clear that um, and that belt will be over that as well um, so yeah it's actually more right there yeah it just clears it um, worst case scenario is I might have to take the engine drop the engine down a little bit lower which I still can but you know rather not um, because I've made a platform for it to sit on which I've yeah during the uh, rain today I managed to weld in this base for the engine to sit on and yeah it's all working it's all rolling as it should and everything it's quite heavy even though it's on bearings and everything it's quite heavy I can imagine pushing it all day would be a pain so I'm thinking a power feed at some point. But yeah, that's where we've we're got at. the uh, water tank bottle fitted as well at the top. So yeah, coming along now. Uh, if I get a nice day tomorrow, I reckon I might be able to get an actual running machine. starts raining so I've just uh, slotted out these holes so that's going to give me a bit of a side to side adjustability which is going to be uh, extra belt tension it's going to be an idler on the belt anyway but you know this will take up extra slack just give me a bit of adjustability only in the sideways direction so see if it fits I'd like to mount this on a big bit of rubber or something but 
it's going to put the engine too high up and clash into that, so let's see how it works out. Right, motor's fitted, but it's uh, it's sitting back a little bit, and that is because of the play in these. You see, it will. I'm going to fit some uh, some bolts in here to adjust this slack, so into these corners, and then we can adjust them, and that they'll run just along the edge, and that will be a better system than just uh, counting on this uh, this slack here in this. If I'd have got a slightly thicker walled steel, it might be alright, but it's quite nice to have these anyway because you can, you know, you have control. Aha, a dot has just arrived with a present for me. Just arrived, centrifugal clutch. A lot of these bandsaws use um, like an idler wheel clutch, but pain, I don't like that idea. Plus, because the band's running on the outside of the belt, I don't think it'll work very well. So we've got an centrifugal clutch, eBay special, and um, I've got an electronic clutch on an old garden tractor that I was going to use, but from what I'm reading on forums is they're a bit too sudden and things tend to break, so um, let's see if this is going to actually work, because this is a bit of a crucial thing really. So imagine that's there, we can have that packed forward a bit, that's no problem. And that would be the belt. Excellent. Let's put, actually put the belt in there like that. And then we'll imagine that that is tensioned up there somewhere. Let's put a clamp on there or something. Right. So basically, that is our setup, and it's going to work as long as that blade's tight and stays away from these edges. We've got clearance everywhere. So that is actually basically perfect I would have liked a little bit more clearance there but as long as this belts there we should be all right I've got one of these runners fitted look but it's just started raining again so I've got to put everything away ah run right I've got me uh, um, bolts that adjust the play out of here in I need proper length bolts with lock nuts and everything but I'm just doing these for now it's working a treat so the bottom's currently sticking out you see we're not quite level so I'll wind that in until it levels up. Did you see that level up there? There you go, perfect. So yeah, see if it's still run. Nice, taking the play out as well. Good, that's a good job. I just made a little spacer just to uh, bring this out a little bit further. Fit the keyway, the key steel. Right then, so we've got this plate which will sit on the mill, like that. Got this idler that we cut this big nut off the back because it's going to hit the belt. Just welded a stud on there. Did that come out of there? No, it's fine. Uh, so that goes in there, nutted on the back, but, you know, accessible from the back. And then that tensions up and down off of a 10 mil bolt through there which I think it's going to work right the holes are drilled probably slot these and stuff eventually that should be where they want to be for now so we get that on I think I might start this up In it. Right, about to uh, start this up for the first time. Bit nerve wracking, should spin that way, seems to be tracking okay. Trouble with this engine is you have to start it at full RPM. So it's going to try and engage the clutch. Here we go. Get ready to shut that off.
working. Let it warm up a second. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the pulley moved. It's not keyed in yet. Oh. That's all that happened. Oh. Everything else is fine. <laughs> yeah, that was exciting. These aren't uh, keyed in and it, it pulled this off. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's the only reason it threw the belt there. So brilliant, that works. So that's going to conclude the video I reckon. So I'll carry on with this next week but I've got loads of other little jobs to do and stuff so I'm not sure there'll be a video next week of this but we'll see. Anyway. Thought I'd just give it another quick go, seeing as it's all set up. Tighten that up as tight as I can. Yeah, she works. <laughs>